When asked to simplify rational expressions, we want to remember how we simplify numerical fractions to help us keep in mind what the equivalent expressions would come from. So for example, if we wanted to simplify the fraction 6 fifteenths. Now we know that when we're simplifying numerical fractions, we want to find the factors that are common to the numerator and denominator and remove any common factors that we find so that we can write an equivalent fraction, a fraction that has the same value as the original, only that is written with smaller numbers, so it's easier to get a grasp of what the value is. So here, I can factor my 6 as 2 times 3, and we can factor 15 as 3 times 5. And we notice that between these, we have a common factor of 3 in the numerator and denominator, so we can remove that common factor pair, and we have our final simplified fraction's value is 2 fifths. Now it's important to note that when we're simplifying our numerical fractions, we need to write the numerator as a multiplication of what creates it, and the denominator as the multiplication that creates it, so that we can remove our common factors. Similarly, when we looked at even using our rules of exponents in previous work, if it said to simplify 12 x squared y z cubed over 36 x y z. I notice that I have multiplication all between the numerator factors and multiplication all in the denominator as well. So I can simplify this fraction by removing the common factors to the numerator and denominator Numerically, the numerical coefficients, I simplify those just as I would any numerical fraction. And the variable factors we use are rules of exponents. So I have a common factor pair of 12 that goes into the numerator and denominator. 12 goes into 12 once and into 36 three times. As far as the variable factors go, I have x squared in the numerator and x to the first in the denominator. So remember when we are simplifying rational expressions that have our exponential expressions that have the same base, we take the bigger exponent minus the smaller exponent and write that answer on the base where the bigger exponent was. So an exponent of 2 minus an exponent of 1 will give me an exponent of 1 on my x in the numerator because that's where my bigger exponent was. For the y's, I can remove that common factor pair already. And for the z's, an exponent of 3 minus an exponent of 1 leaves me an exponent of 2 on my base of z in the numerator. So my simplified expression then would be in my numerator, 1 times x times z squared is x z squared over 3 in my denominator. Now, both of these are problems that we've already seen examples of. But now that we know how to factor, our next type of problem would be to simplify something like x squared minus x minus 6 over x squared minus 9. The difference between this problem and the variable expression rational type problem that we had before is that here I have subtractions or if I had additions between my terms in the numerator and denominator. In our earlier problems we had multiplications so the operation was already attached by multiplication like we needed to when we were simplifying fractions. So what we need to do here is write our numerator as a two factors or as how many ever factors I need up there and write my denominator as factors so that I can see if there's any common factor pairs that I can remove. So let's look at this. In my numerator I have x squared minus x minus 6. There are no common factors all the way through. There are three terms. It's in descending order. 
And when my power on my variable in the leading term is double the exponent on the letter in the middle, then I have a chance that it might factor as two binomials. Now I'm going to put an x in both first positions of my binomials so that if I multiplied those together, I would get my x squared. And then in the last spots of the binomial, I need to put the numbers who multiply together to make negative 6, but also would combine as like terms for my outers and my inners to get my negative 1 coefficient for the combination of the like terms in the middle. And the numbers that multiply together and give me negative 6 and add together to give me negative 1 would be a negative 3 and a positive 2. So that's our factorization of our numerator. And now I've written my numerator as an overall multiplication of two quantities instead of separate different terms. We want to do the same thing in the denominator. I have x squared minus 9. So two different terms. There's no common factor all the way through. And with a two-term expression, I want to see if it factors as either a difference of two squares, a difference of two cubes, or a sum of two cubes. Here, it's a minus, so it's a difference. x is to the second power. That's a square. And 9 is a perfect square number. So this is the difference of two terms that are made up entirely of perfect squares. So the difference of two squares factors as putting in the first positions of each of the, the binomials, that which when you multiply together would give you the first term. So that would be an x in both first positions of our binomial factors. And then in the last spots, we need to have the numbers who would multiply together and give me negative 9. And you can really even think of it as they would also have to add together to give you zero for your middle coefficient. Well, the numbers that do that are a plus 3 and a minus 3. Now when I look between the factors in the numerator and the factors in the denominator, I see we have a common factor pair of x minus 3 that we can remove. And our simplified expression is x plus 2 in my numerator and x plus 3 in my denominator. And that is as far as that expression can be simplified because we can only remove common factors between the numerator and denominator and in order for us to keep our equivalent expression to the original one.